Tetracan Super Mono Block, a channel about using and repairing multi track tape recorders. Today, Tascam 464 Gear C. Uh, this is going to be well out of focus because I'm not an autofocus. Oh, there we go. Today, we're going to replace this little guy and this little guy that goes inside this little guy. I have described in previous videos how one of the problems that this particular unit, the Portis Studio 464, is susceptible to is a crumbling gear C. How would you know if you had a crumbling gear C? Well, you might have that noise. You might not have that noise. You might have a tape stuck in here. And when you try and press any of the shuttle buttons, um, these three buttons here flash and nothing happens up here. Basically, what's happening is, this is a three motor unit, so uh, here's your capstan motor, that turns this flywheel and that makes that little bit of metal turn and that's what's making your tape um, go at a steady speed. This is your real motor, um, and that'll press up against here or here and turn these and so that's rewind. Fast forward, also uh, this will turn a bit faster than your capstan motor when you're in play mode to make sure that the tape stays tight and doesn't build up and chew here. And then the final motor, that's changing your mode in response to the shuttle button. So it's deciding whether these this pair of heads is retracted or um, pressed up against, you know, the pinch roller up against the capstan, the tape heads up against the tape. And the way that that motor transmits its uh, motion to this mechanism, I wonder if we can kind of see in there. We're going to open it up properly, but basically there's a series of gears in there. And um, for whatever reason, the Tascam sent away gear C, which is the one nearest the top to be made at a different factory. I'm guessing that's what it is. Um, um, this is a, a replacement part, but often this will just crumble completely. Um, you know, you open it up and it's actually snapped into several bits. Um, even in ones where you've opened them up and it's intact, it's quite often more of a kind of pinkish orange colour than the other two um, cogs in the chain. And I, it's just basically poor plastic, it ages less well, and when that breaks, the buzzing sound you're hearing there is just this little control motor turning at full tilt. Depending on which mode the cassette player was in when that gear broke, it's possible for uh, the tape heads to be up, stuck inside the cassette, uh, and then when you press these buttons, the logic system here kind of shits the bed and it goes, ah, I'm expecting something to happen but it isn't, and you'll get these three lights flashing. The reason that that's not happening in this unit and you're just getting the buzzing sound of the control motor is that at the point that I've removed an actually intact gear C from this transport for demonstration purposes the the heads are retracted. To access gear C we're going to need to remove one, two, three screws. Um, they're of a smaller kind so I've got the smaller of the two sizes of um, Phillips screwdriver that I use With the last of those three screws removed, this plate comes away. And here we can see gears A, B, C, uh, I think maybe this is D. Anyway, if you look at the um, exploded view in the service manual, this is gear C. And uh, this is, tends to be the one that breaks. I've never come across problems with the other three. I don't know how apparent it is from this image, but this one seems to be intact, everything's working fine. But you can see that it's got this kind of brownish pink colour to it that the others don't. So you can see that it's it's ageing. In order to access gear C, we need to remove this gear beside it. Um, it's held on with a little um, plastic retention clip. Um, it's the same kind of clip that you've seen me deal with on the idler wheels on the Tascam 244 before. So I use tweezers to remove it. Scraping some of this um, lubricant off so I can try and see the split in it. 
and it, you know it's not difficult, but it's a pain in the arse. You're gonna probably make half a dozen attempts at getting this off before it actually comes. Right, there we go. So that's a danger of flipping away. So I kind of try and put my fingers over, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. You must keep that safe there. I haven't actually found a replacement supplier for those, so... Right, at that point, that will lift off. The grease, or whatever it is on there, can be pretty stiff, actually. Um, it becomes this kind of gluey consistency. Sometimes you'll find that these are intact, but then if you apply quite gentle pressure to them, they'll snap in your hands. That's not too... but you can feel it's got more give than you would want a mechanical part to have, but it is okay. So before applying this new one, there's a lot of things you could use to clean that. Um, I just find it convenient to have these kind of disposable isopropyl swabs of the kind that a nurse would use or a tattoo artist. Use that and get rid of any old grease that might do more inhibiting than lubricating off that spindle and I've got a little bit of silicone lub lubricant here I'm just put a little bit of that on that shaft you know when I'm putting lubricant on a stiff shaft there's a, a large part of my brain which is trying to you know figure out who is my audience people like me with a smarty sense of humor or should I be trying to keep this child friendly tell me in the comments do you want me to be less or more like myself that back on and we slip this and check that it's all rotating okay and then put that little retention clip back on there and then screw this back in place At that point, um, all your issues with that part of the mechanism should be resolved. Quick recap about suppliers, I have talked about this before. I once paid 60 quid, including postage and import duties from the US, to buy one of these. That one I just put in was a bit cheaper, I think it worked out about 20 to 25 pounds per unit from a supplier in Germany. I mean, as 3D printing becomes more widely available, I guess the prices of things like that are going to come down more than they already have. I mean, you've got to think um, somebody's got a 3D printer and it's a lot of um, investment in technology and you're not going to sell a lot of these, so I suppose it's not surprising that people, someone's going to ask for a big markup every time they sell one. A guy trading under the name Recursive Delete on Instagram out of Portland, Oregon, and I think he's hooked up with a guy who's 3D printing these. I haven't actually heard back about the price, but particularly if you're based in the United States, maybe that's a cheap place to um, get hold of one of those. So you could contact him and see if they can get a better um, deal than one of those. That's Recursive Delete on Instagram. I've just been buying them from eBay. I've had a couple of inquiries through this channel about various kind of like little plastic parts. Um, you know, maybe at some point in the future, I've, you know, I'm kind of interested in 3D printing technology. I actually, I studied um, 3D graphics. That's uh, I've got a master's degree in that and no qualifications whatsoever in this. Um, so it's maybe something that I could move into in the future. So maybe I'll, I'll start making little things like this.